Good morning, guys. Welcome to morning prayer. How are y'all doing this morning? Um, I got a lot of interesting comments on the evening prayer last night. Uh, a lot of them were from people who didn't watch the whole video, didn't listen to what was being said. Thought I was attacking people's salvation. Never said anything about it. It is what it is. It was like I told David Bannister earlier this morning. I feel like I'm yelling at someone to not put their arm in a wood chipper. They see it running. They see the damage it does. They know what's going to happen. And I'm yelling at them, stop, don't do that. And they look at me and look me right in the eye and stick their arm in there anyway. And then get mad and blame me because I didn't warn them. And when I take this kind of understanding to the Bible, I find person after person who went through the same thing. Constantly warning and it, it's going nowhere. So that's where my frustration comes from. I'm human. I'm gonna I'm gonna get frustrated too, just like everyone else. Because my goal is to get the word out there. The truth out there. What the scriptures are saying. My desire is driven because I deeply care for everyone. I don't want people to be misled. I don't want people to misunderstand. I don't want people to um, walk on the wrong side of the tracks and get separated when the train comes through. And it's because of that is why I try so hard. And I've also read enough of the Bible to know that, I've read all the Bible, I've read enough to know that of what comes from some of these things. And what's waiting for a lot of people. And I'm trying to sound the alarm against that so that people will hear and see and change. Not from me, but to go to the Lord. To talk to Him. To learn from Him. Because that's what He wants. He wants us all to go to Him and learn from Him. Too many, many of us elevate a YouTube teacher and make them our Bible and make them our uh, religious leader. And the thing is, we've never needed one. All we have to do is read the Bible and make Jesus our YouTube preacher, make Jesus our religious leader. But all I can do is proclaim what I'm given. All I can do is share the message that I'm given. I can't make anyone listen. This morning, I'm going to pray Psalm 75, and I have a salvation verse to show, again, since so many people keep asking constantly, salvation is a free gift. I share this in just about every video I do. Salvation is a free gift. I can't word it any differently and I can't share it any differently. So let's get into some prayer. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Your beloved only begotten Son, our amazing Lord and righteous King, our Savior, our Redeemer, who came and shed his blood on this earth to save us. The amazing works that you're doing in the world the, the effort that you're putting into trying to save mankind. You've gone through great lengths to get man to turn away from this world and turn toward you. Your creation proclaims it. You called up people all throughout history to proclaim it. And collectively it seems to fall on deaf ears. A lot of frustration that goes along with doing these kinds of things. When I read the 
the men of the Bible throughout history before Jesus came, their frustration was valid. I understand what they went through. I understand what our Lord went through. He faced that same frustration. We are human. Our brains leak. We forget things. Nevertheless, Father, I'm thankful you've given me this charge. I'll do like, the best I can until it's time to stop. Father, we love you and we bless you and we praise you. We honor you and we glorify you. Our desire, my desire is to be with you. Our desire is to leave this earth and be in heaven with you and worship you in heaven. There is an ongoing battle down here, a constant fight every day to hold on. Many are losing that fight. Father, help us hold on. Help us to keep glorifying you. Help us to keep praising you, to keep giving thanks to you. We give thanks this day for the many blessings. But we also give thanks for the chastisement. Because if you didn't correct us, we wouldn't be sons of God. And because you correct us, we are sons of God. It's because you love us that you correct us. Jesus said, as many as I save, I reprove. You do that because you want us to walk on that path you've laid before us. And it's all over the Bible. <clears throat> you give us the word. You, you show us the secrets. You open the scriptures up to us. So that we can walk after you. So that we can follow after you. So that we can reach that, that peaceful life that you have waiting for us. And all we have to do is reach out and take it. To deny the world and to choose you is probably one of the greatest things we can do. Right next to salvation, that's the greatest, well, it is salvation, basically, that happens to salvation, is that what we can do. And to deny this world its prize. Eternal life is what we are striving for. And standing in your presence is the reward. To be able to glorify you for all eternity is, is the reward. It's an amazing, amazing reward. That's my desire. I, I want to be in heaven with you. But there is a, a battle. There is a, a, a judgment that has to come. And you speak about this very clearly in your word. Psalm 75, thanksgiving for God's righteous judgment. We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks. For your wondrous works declare that your name is near. When I choose the proper time, I will judge uprightly. The earth and all its inhabitants are dissolved. I set up its pillars firmly, Selah. I said to the boastful, do not deal boastfully. And to the wicked, do not lift up the horn. Do not lift up your horn on high. Do not speak with a stiff neck, for exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup, and the wine is red, it is fully mixed, and he pours it out. Surely its dregs shall all the wicked of the earth drain and drink down. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked I will also cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. Father, we know that those that stand for truth, those that stand up and proclaim what your word says, these horns will be exalted. Those that deny your word, those that turn away from the truth, they won't be. And this is your judgment, not ours. This is the judgment you take on. And I'm glad you're the judge because I know I can't judge pro properly. Help us to glorify you. Help us to give thanks to you. Put in us a heart of thanksgiving. 
a heart of joy, knowing that you are our God. And help us to show others how to come to you. The simple act of becoming saved. Romans 10, 13, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It is a simple act, yet many come against it. Many misunderstand it. Many say we don't have to call on the name, yet your scripture says exactly the opposite. Lord, I'm sticking with the truth. I'm sticking with you. I'm not going to go where others want to go. Because I know what your word says. I can read it and understand it. It's clear. You're doing an incredible thing in this world. The work you're doing, the changes that you're making in the body, the call out that you've sent, is clear and amazing. More every day seem to be turning away. More every day seem to be going after the world. I don't, I don't understand it fully. But Father, I will keep proclaiming your word and keep proclaiming these truths as best I can. Because yours is the kingdom. And yours is the righteous judgment, not ours. Bless you, Father. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for this literal free gift of salvation. Nothing earned. All we have to do is receive it. Reach out and receive it. It is in Jesus' name we pray and bless you and praise you and give thanks to you. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for morning prayer. It's a weird world we live in right now. There are a lot of very strange things going on. A lot of people coming up with some very confusing things that don't match scripture. Saying things that directly oppose scripture. And it's disheartening and disappointing. But... The Bible told us it would be there. It told us it would happen. So how do we circumvent these things? Well, we don't attack the person because it's not the person that's the problem. It's the influence behind the person. So we preach the truth. And those who are willing to receive it will receive it. And those who won't, won't. There's a lot of implications that go behind that statement. Because the Bible tells us about that. I love you guys very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.